Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Alien, the original screenplay. This is part four. You'll find part one linked down below in the description box. So please do check it out and catch up to part four if you missed it. With that being said, let's dive right into it. We saw it inside, and it slammed the door on it. It's in there now. Now what? Well, I guess we opened the door and net it? I'd hate to open that door. The crew have captured, cornered the xenomorph. We can hear it banging around, crashing inside. It looks completely different from the first one. It's more like a worm with legs and tentacles. I know what we can do. We can pump poison gas into the room and kill it. Hey, wait a minute. That's all our food supplies in there. We can't pump poison gas all over them. I think... Hey, it, it, it just got awfully quiet. The banging and crashing has now stopped. Now what? What do you think? Now we go in. They open the door. Food is destroyed. It's everywhere. Netting. Supplies. And what looks like... Blood, maybe? God damn it, it escaped. The xenomorph is nowhere in sight. The vent. It could go all over the ship. We'll have to check the charts to know for sure. They pull up the schematics of the ship. That one section of the ventilator shaft only has two outlets, you notice? The food storage room on one end, and the cooling unit on the other. It's trapped in between. Now we have to drive it out. The only thing I can think of is for somebody to crawl in there and flush it to the cooling unit. Uh, they could use a flamethrower? So, one of us goes into the air shaft and drives the thing along, while the rest of us wait down in the cooling unit with a net. Uh. Sounds like a rough one. The only question left is who gets to crawl down the air shaft? The captain of the ship has compiled some papers. Let's be democratic. Take one. An X marks the spot. Hunter has picked up the straw. The choosing paper. So which means he must now enter the vent. Sorry, Hunter. And so we see Hunter suiting up. Flamethrower in hand and motion tracker. Well, uh, good luck? I hope you won't need me, but if you do, I'm here. He squats down, ready to enter the vent. Right. Hey, do you guys read me down there? Yeah, no, yeah, we're, we're getting into position. Okay, I'm starting now. And now we see Hunter crawling along the vent shaft. It's a tight squeeze. He's a big chap. I'm getting something here. Don't take any chances. The motion track is going off. So he fires the flamethrower. A burst of fire rips out into the shaft. There. That's where it's got to come out. That's a flip-flop gate to channel the air. But we can use it to trap the thing. Right, now, let's let's keep it closed. They're getting ready for the alien. I've got Hunter and something else in front of him. They're also tracking it. They're on the next level up. They're getting the net ready. Let's get moving with this net. Hey. Hey, you, you guys, I, I don't think this shaft goes on too much farther. Blast the flamethrower once more. Anyway, it's, it's getting pretty hot in here. And the beep, beep, beep of the motion tracker is going crazy. They're getting really close now. All right. Then, when it gets to the other side of the door, you, you sing out, then drop the door, okay? Roby and I will bag it, and then we'll take it to the ventral airlock. We flash cut now to Hunter in the vent shaft. And there's a hiss from something in front of him. Okay, Hunter... Our screens show you as being near to the opening. We'll open it up. 
then will cue you as you start blasting. That'll drive it right out. You don't have to go any farther. Good. I can hear the thing. Close. Okay, okay, open the vent, Melconis. Melconis clicks the vent open. But what stands before them is no longer a small, worm-like creature. This massive, alien entity stands over them, towers over them, and it quickly lunges into Melconis, wraps its tail around him, rips his head off, and jumps out the way. Sh what the shit? Just as Hunter gets out of the vent. What happened? What the hell happened to Melconis? You mean his body was still kicking when it ran off with him? Like a chicken. It was horrible. Just horrible. It's monstrous. It grew. We, we were completely unprepared. Listen. He sure didn't like this flamethrower. That's right. We can't kill it on the ship, but we can at least keep it at bay and maybe drive it into the airlock. Thing is, the flamethrower's about out of fuel. There's some more fuel down in the storage lockers next to the lounge. I'll, I'll go get it. You guys just sealed it off. It can't get to that section. We sure need this flamethrower. Alright, Faust, but do not go below decks. I think it's time we took a hard look at those hieroglyphs. They start pulling the schematics back up, the pictures from the recording. There's a pattern, but it's meaningless to me. If you look closely, there are recognisable forms. Very stylized, but if you stare at it, you can see some of the different creatures we've been dealing with. Well, I suppose that star-shaped thing could be the parasite that got on Broussard. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that thing there, legs, tentacles, that's the thing we saw in the food locker. And then the big one. Yeah, this is, this is all the same creature. We're seeing the different stages in its life cycle. Then that tomb must have been some kind of fertility temple, where they stored their eggs and maybe held mating rituals. And Broussard got cord in their reproductive cycle. You will notice though that there are no more phases. Only four forms are shown. After that the pattern repeats. Which probably means more spores are coming. Faust is walking below decks. He sees the alien shit. It's, it's in the lock. What? Below the main lock. It's in the main airlock. Blow the lock! He keeps repeating. And just as they're closing the doors to the airlock, it hears. And it quickly lunges and jumps out the way. And in doing so, it pushes Faust into the lock. No! No! I'm trapped in the lock! lock uh. And it severs him in half, guts spilling out, eye popping. And he's dead. And because he's trapped in the airlock, decompression begins. And the computer goes haywire. The alarms go off. Warning. Critical decompression. And so the crew mobilise. They start running down. They need to resolve this issue. And fast. Roby sees the alien. And quickly runs the other way. And just as quickly as it started, it's over. And they're breathing. They're gasping for air. <coughs> they're reaching out. The oxygen they need. The supplies are low. And they open some tanks, quickly. How much oxygen did we lose? We've got six hours left. Oh. My. God. What happened? I saw it. Faust got himself jammed in the airlock door. His... his body held it open. Can we get to Faust? No. I had to seal off a whole section. We'd, we'd lose too much of our remaining air if we opened the connecting door. Well, at least we're rid of the damn monster. It must have been the first thing sucked out of the ship. Mm, no. No such luck. I saw it running down one of the corridors. 
We can't fight this thing. There's only six hours of air left. We're dead. I don't buy that. There's still time to destroy it and get ourselves in the freezers. I want to hear every suggestion you can come up with, no matter how wild. We can't kill it on board. It's huge now. It must have tremendous amounts of that acid in its body. Roby plays with a can in the background. But pipes up. I've got an idea. But you're not going to like it. Okay. So first we shut down all the cooling systems on the star drive engines. That'll blow the ship up. Right. But it'll take a few minutes for the engines to overheat and melt down the core. And in the meantime, we get in the lifeboat and leave the ship. Blow the ship up? And the creature with it. We can make it back to Earth in the lifeboat. But the lifeboat can't accelerate to light speed. It doesn't matter. We're already at light speed and when we get back to the colonies they'll pick us up in the network. What about all the minerals and elements in the cargo hold? That's the only reason we came out here. We'd have to abandon them all. We'd be broke. Our lives are more important. And anyway, we can take a small amount of the most valuable stuff with us on the lifeboat. No, it won't work. I just realised why. There's only one hypersleep freezer on the lifeboat. Only one of us could survive. But the idea is good. If we could just turn it around somehow. If we could just get the creature into the lifeboat. We could launch it into space and blow it up. Good, good, yes, that's good. We can load up the lifeboat with explosives and trigger them remotely once the lifeboat is in space. And remember, that flamethrower needs more fuel. Which explosive should we use? I suggest the N13 sticks. They're portable and they can be radio detonated. The stage is set. The crew has a plan. You know, it's funny. The stuff we went to so much trouble to dig up, the treasure... The pay dirt. It'll make it back to Earth just fine, even if we're not with it. But the motion tracker starts going off. Hold it. Up there. So, do we ignore it and finish loading the explosives into the boat, or do we flush it out now? Now. Give me the tracker. If we can get it into the boat, we won't have to blow it up. We can just eject it into space. So the captain takes the tracker and the flamethrower starts going off into the ship. The lifeboat though, it's it's empty. False alarm. You can come up, it's safe. It's one of the bodies, one of their crew members. The ship's gravitational attraction must have drawn Broussard back. Perhaps we can bring him in after we've destroyed the thing. So they head back, getting explosives and supplies. Place the explosives along the wall joints. What we really need is some red mead in here for bait. Well, if we had some, I'd eat it, because I'm starting to get hungry. Well, now we have to herd that thing up here. Whoever's doing the herding is going to have their hands pretty full. I think somebody should stay by the lifeboat to slam the door on the thing once it's inside and to serve as... Isn't bait the word you used? Hey, look. Somebody has to have his hands free to lock the creature in the lifeboat. They start drawing papers again. Democratically. 